In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Photoshop to save your images for the web. Now, with this particular file that I'm currently using, it's 444 meg in file size. Now, we're going to run into some issues when we're actually trying to save this for the web when using Photoshop's built-in save for web and devices uh, setting that's here. Now as you can see if I was to click on this I'd get an error message and it basically says that my image exceeds, exceeds the size uh, that save for the web and devices was designed for. So what you want to make sure when you're actually saving for the web that you actually reduce your file sizes uh, in order to uh, improve the performance of using the save for the web um, window. So if I go to image and just go to image size, we'll just drop this down to say 2000 pixels in width and click OK. And what you'll notice is I'll just fit to screen again. We'll now go to the save for web and devices and the save for web window shall appear. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice is there are quite a lot of different options here. So don't get overwhelmed when first looking at this. Uh, the ones that you're really going to pay particular attention to are located in the top right hand corner up here. Um, they allow you to choose the particular format that you want to save into. So in this case, they give you GIF, JPEG, PNG uh, 8-bit and PNG 24-bit color and they also give you bitmap. You really want to avoid using bitmap and just stick to the top four uh, that are listed here. And predominantly probably just the JPEG and the PNG24, especially for color photographs. Now with JPEG, you'll notice here you have a compression quality setting. So you can actually choose what compression setting you want to use when actually compressing your photos for the web. Now the one I recommend sticking to is a quality of 60%, uh, which is a high setting. Now this is going to, I, I wouldn't go anything under 60% because then you're actually going to start to see compression artifacts and that's something you really want to avoid with your images when they go onto the web, otherwise they start to look really hideous and really unsightly. So anything under 60% I would avoid using, uh, anything over you're more than welcome to use, um, but just remember that it's also going to increase the file size. Now when I actually set the compression size, you'll notice that down in the bottom left hand corner here, you'll actually see the file size that it's actually going to save to. In this case, it's going to be 770.5 kilobytes. Now it also gives you an example of the type of internet connection speed here. So if we had an internet connection speed of 56.8 six uh, kilobytes per second, you'd notice that it would take 140 second uh, download uh, time in order to download this particular image. Um, in this particular case, you know, that, that is actually quite large and it's, it's, it is 2000 pixels and that is, you know, larger than any website that you're ever going to be viewing. So you really actually want to reduce the size. So we're going to keep it a c compression of 60%. We're going to leave it at optimize. And we're also going to, you have the option of embedding a color profile. Now, if you don't know what color profiles are, don't particularly worry about it at this stage in the process. I've got a whole section on understanding color management and we'll actually go into what color profiles are and what they can actually do for your photographs. Um, so under here, you can, you've also got some more color management settings here. Don't particularly worry about them at this point in time. We'll, we'll go over these again later in a future video. But the, th the area that you really want to sort of pay attention to here is the image size. Now in this particular example, it's obviously too large uh, to actually go out to the web. You want something sort of at least under a thousand pixels. And, you know, in most cases for a website or a blog, you want to save, you know, probably around 600 pixels. So within this window, it'll allow you to actually resize the image. And as you can see there, it's resized and that would be the actual size of the photograph when it's actually saved, which is 30% of the original size. And it also allows you to give the actual, uh, choose an interpolation that you actually want to use when resizing this. Now don't, don't worry about that at this particular stage because once again we're going to go into image sizing and I'll explain all the different variations of interpolation and which ones you should really use and, and for what particular purposes. Now there is another feature of this particular um, application that you really want to take note of and it actually allows you to display multiple 
variations of your images. So as you can see here, I've got the original file and then I've got the JPEG file that I've actually set up here at quality 60. Now, if I was to click on one of these, you can now see the files at uh, 30 in uh, compression quality and this one's at 15 in compression quality. So you can actually start to see a difference in the actual uh, file compression sizes that it's actually using. So this is actually quite a neat feature. Now, the reason why is you can actually select either one of these windows and actually change the quality setting. So if I wanted to reduce the quality of this even further, you'd notice that now it's set to, sorry, you'd notice now it's set to zero. And you can actually really see the JPEG artifacts that are actually occurring throughout this particular image and it looks quite ghastly. Um, you can also change the magnification if you really want to emphasize what you're actually looking at here. And as you can see here, uh, at zero quality compression, you'll notice there is a lot of JPEG artifacts going on. Whereas at 60%, you still, you've got a little bit, but you really can't see it, especially at 100%. And then also at the original file size, there are no JPEG compression artifacts. So that's something you can play around with to give you an idea of what are some of the compression uh, sizes that you want to use uh, based on visual examples. So that is very useful. Now underneath this, you'll also have your RGB settings that are located here, and they'll actually give you values as you actually hover over them. Or as you may not be aware, when embedding color profiles or converting to particular color profiles, they may actually vary the color of your image. Now, with all computers, you've got different monitor screens and they'll display colors differently. So this will actually allow you to have some insight into how your colors are being affected. And it's, it's more of an advanced thing and you really don't want to sort of worry yourself with that at this particular time. So as you can see, when saving your files for the web, you really want to use Photoshop's Save for Web feature, as it gives you full control over how your photographs are actually saved, right through from choosing a particular file format, choosing how that format is actually compressed and managed, choosing what particular size you want your photos saved to, and not only that, choosing how you want the color in your photographs managed. So it is an extremely powerful feature of Photoshop that I use quite a lot and it's something that you really want to consider when actually saving your photos for your website or blog. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and of course, please share it with your friends. If you want to get even more awesome resources to kick ass with Photoshop, plus you want to get the stuff that I just can't put inside my videos, come on over to thephotographychallenge.com and sign up for email updates. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.